Hey guys, what's up? It's Apple Critics from AppleCritics.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you iOS 12.4.8 and giving you a hands-on and review of iOS 12.4.8 overall. Uh, so it's specifically made for older devices, uh, and that includes the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 6, and the iPhone 6 Plus. And I'm using this on my iPhone 6 Plus, so it's going to be from that perspective. Uh, now, it's been two months since the release of iOS 12.4.7, uh, so this has been long awaited. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what is new and what you should look forward to in iOS 12.4.8. Uh, so first off is the update size. So first off is the update size. So this is the update size for iOS 12.4.8. Uh, so you can see it was only a shocking 35.9 megabytes coming from iOS 12.4.7. Uh, and the description that Apple gave it was that iOS 12.4.8 provides important security updates and is recommended for all users. Uh, so it doesn't give you anything else, it just tells you that. Uh, so that's very, very interesting. Now we can also take a look at some more information uh, in settings. So we can go into general and then about. So then if you take a look at, let's say iOS 12.4.8 uh, and the Build number is 16G201. Now looking at the modem firmware, it is 7.80.04, which is the same as iOS 12.4.7. Uh, so basically what that means is that the connectivity issues that you had in iOS 12.4.7 will still be in iOS 12.4.8, uh, and they didn't fix it at all. So it's gonna be the same network connectivity as iOS 12.4.7. So if you thought it would improve, uh, it will not as it's the same modem firmware. Now looking at the home screen and the overall device, you can see there's no difference. It's the same as iOS 12.4.7, so there's no new big features. Uh, there's no dark mode. Uh, there's no widgets on the home screen like iOS 14. So it's just exactly the same. So it's just good to see that Apple is still supporting the older devices. That's my main takeaway from this. Uh, and just the main reason for this iOS 12.4.8 update is the bug fixes and the security patches. So that is the main reason for it. Now, once again, just reiterating the fact that this was only a 36 megabyte update on my iPhone 6 Plus coming from iOS 12.4.7, but on the iPhone 5S, it's a slightly bigger update at 768 megabytes on the iPhone 5S, so that should be noted. Uh, now, uh, Apple did address the text character bug in iOS 12.4.7, uh, so that was one of the main issues, uh, and check rain also still works uh, for the check rain JB, uh, so that's good uh, that it still works. In terms of the overall performance, you can see how smooth it is. It's still the same performance as iOS 12.4.7. Uh, it's good for multitasking and just performing basic functions on a phone. It's not specifically made for those heavy games that are really RAM intensive and uh, take up a lot of storage and just put a lot of stress on the device. So uh, those games such as Real Racing and uh, games that have add-ons and have very high quality graphics such as PUBG, that wouldn't be good. But uh, some light social media apps, some Safari browsing, uh, some texting, some calls, uh, maybe playing subway surfers here and there would be good. Now the battery life overall is still the same. Uh, so there's nothing too new about the battery life. Now looking at it, here we have some more information about the battery. As you can see how this battery says to actually service it. So that's how bad the battery health is. Uh, so 79% on this particular iPhone 6 Plus. So that means that it can only charge up to 79% of the battery and that the battery is going down. So you're probably wondering, should you update? Well, I would highly recommend updating because it's very rare to see Apple still doing updates on at least a five-year-old phone. So it's good to see this. So I would highly recommend updating because it makes it more secure. You can still have access to the CheckRain JB. You get a slightly better uh, performance and battery life and it's just more secure overall. Now you won't expect any big features. I will still relatively be the same as iOS 12. There's no iOS 13 features that will be on this. So that's what you should expect. It's just strictly for uh, security patches uh, and bug fixes and just fixing small performance issues uh, and exploits. So once again, I highly recommend that you at least have, let's say, 100 megabytes of storage uh, if you're on iOS 12.4.7 and you're upgrading. Uh, so just at least have that. But it's always good to have a few gigabytes free when it comes to updating the software. Uh, so that's what I highly recommend. If you're currently running iOS 12.4.7 and you're upgrading to iOS 12.4.8, the installation should take less than 10 minutes. It took about seven minutes uh, on this particular iPhone 6 Plus, uh, so that was very interesting. Now, some other key notes uh, that I've noticed about iOS 12.4.7 
12.4.8 is that the battery life is currently stable. The Wi-Fi connectivity is fast and reliable right now. Bluetooth is working normal and the GPS and cellular data are both stable. Uh, so that's the connectivity part. Uh, so this is what I've noticed in this short time with iOS 12.4.8. Now in terms of apps, Third-party apps such as Netflix, Dark Sky, Twitter, Slack, Asana, uh, Gmail, Chrome, and Spotify, they all feel stable on iOS 12.4.8. Now, first-party apps like Safari, Podcasts, and Calendars are running just fine right now. Uh, now, the overall speed, uh, I would say that iOS 12.4.8 feels just as fast as iOS 12.4.7. And uh, now, if you're running to bugs or performance issues on iOS 12.4.7, or an older version of iOS 12, you'll probably want to install the update for iOS 12.4.8 right now. Now, in terms of the overall problems on iOS 12.4.8, iOS 12.4.8 is just a small point upgrade, but it could have a big impact on your device's performance. Now, I've been hearing a bunch of an assortment of problems, including installation issues, uh, some weird battery drain, issues with connectivity, uh, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS, issues with the first and third party apps. So once again, a first party app is your stock apps, such as the settings, Safari, uh, the weather. Those are the first party apps. And the third party apps are apps that you install from the app store. Now there's also once again been issues with those first and third party apps, abnormal amounts of lag, random reboots and more. Uh, so if you've uh, ran into the issue on iOS 12.4.8, uh, be sure to just leave a comment down below and I can help troubleshoot that issue. And then we can also see if other people in the comment section down below are having the same issues as you. Now, if you're still frustrated with iOS 12.4.8's performance uh, on your iPhone, what you can do is just downgrade to iOS 12.4.7 and then the move back could actually help your device's performance before all the issues happen. Now, once again, Apple won't sign iOS 12.4.7 for too long, uh, so it would be highly recommended that you go ahead and downgrade quickly if you're still having issues on iOS 12.4.8 because after a while, Apple will block your ability to downgrade. So uh, Apple isn't signing older versions of iOS 12. So once again, once Apple stops signing iOS 12.4.7, that means you can no longer go back. And once you update to iOS 12.4.8, you're stuck. So keep that in mind before you tap on install. Now, last but not least, Apple hasn't confirmed iOS 12.4.9, so there's no guarantee that Apple will continue to provide owners of these devices with new software in the months ahead. Uh, so that is all the information on iOS 12.4.8. Hopefully you thoroughly enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button down below. Be sure to check out all the other videos on my channel. Be sure to check out AppleCritics.com for your Apple news views and more. Be sure to uh, follow me on all my social media platforms at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, my username there is AppleCritics. And be sure to subscribe for more great content. And thanks for watching.